Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Regular viewers will know I review many photographic, audio and video related products. And firstly, I really want to thank all my subscribers and everyone who watches this channel. It really does help me grow the channel, it motivates me and it's great. I only do it for fun. I earn a few pennies from monetization, but not a great deal. So uh, for me, these videos that I produce are to help you guys and girls and because I enjoy doing it. So there we go. What we're looking at today is a free bit of software. Now this gets a bit confusing because I wasn't even aware that it was free. Um, and it is, and it's a great, great bit of software. It's an alternative to Lightroom, but ironically, it's made by Adobe that make Lightroom. So, um, and what we're looking at is Adobe Bridge. Now, Bridge uh, works on both PC and Mac, and there isn't any limit as to how many computers you put it on. I know that for sure, because I've installed it on, oh, it must be six or seven of my computers, and it works completely fine, and it's completely free. Um, to get it free though, you need to subscribe to the uh, Adobe Creative Cloud. And you just download the Adobe Creative Cloud and um, once it's downloaded, it will come up, come up like this. Now obviously I've got installed, as you can see on my computer, Photoshop, Photoshop Bridge, two versions of Bridge, I don't know why, um, Lightroom Classic Camera Raw. And then it shows you what you can download as a trial. I think though, to actually get it, you need to download a trial version of one of their pieces of software. It could be Photoshop, could be Lightroom or whatever. And then once the trial runs out, which is completely fine, you carry on using Bridge as you would as if you were paying for it. And it's great. And to get it onto your other computers, again, you have to download um, Adobe Creative Cloud, but because you've already created a cloud account, you just sign into it. Um, so there we go, that's, the, the, uh, that's how you get it. Um, and it is, as I say, it is fantastic. Uh, and I say, I tell you why I say it's fantastic, and I'll also tell you why um, I think it's a great alternative to Lightroom, particularly for uh, asset management, for actually, you know, filing your photographs, searching for them, etc. It's not great for editing. It's not, a, uh, it's not designed for editing your photographs, but there is a tremendous workaround to that as well, which uh, I'll briefly show you. So when you open it. It comes up with, um, basically you've got a, a tab along here with essentials, libraries, film strip, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so on the left hand side, you've got all your folders. Um, you can create favorites so you don't have to keep looking for them. Uh, um, and then you've got down here, your metadata. I'll go, well, filters it says here, um, which is basically a metadata that's stored on, uh, with each image you take. Um, but I'm gonna go through that, I think that, that bit alone is so much better than Lightroom. I love that feature, and I'll explain why I do in a moment. Um, so you've got your grid view like you would have in Lightroom and virtually all the asset management programs. You've got a publish um, section here, um, a navigator as they would call that in Lightroom. Um, they call it preview here, uh, publish and export. Publish and export are very similar. Um, and then you have actually got your metadata down the right hand side here, which shows you everything you can conceivably think of that's tied to that particular image. So if we just look at this in uh, essentials view, you can make that uh, those thumbnails bigger or smaller. Let's go with that size. Well, yeah, let's go with that size, how to do. So to make an image bigger, so you can actually go through these images quite easily. So if you want to make that image bigger, just click on the image and hit the space bar. And that's pretty straightforward, very different to Lightroom, but just hit the space, space bar and then you get a, a full screen image and you can zoom in onto that full screen image just by one click of a mouse. And then that will zoom into the image so you can check its focus. Well, predominantly you're checking its focus. Um, and then click it again, and then that image goes back to full screen. The escape key takes it back to the thumbnails, etc. So that's pretty much the gist of how that works. You can double click it. Now double clicking it actually takes it to an external editor. Now I've got mine set up to uh, edit in camera raw, unless it's a JPEG I've clicked on, then that's gonna load, I think that's loading Photoshop now. 
So just be aware that double clicking it, unlike Lightroom, it, it has a completely different effect. But uh, I'll cancel that because we don't want to load up um, Photoshop. But if it was a raw image like we have here, I've got double click set up for opening Camera Raw, which again is a free element of the Adobe Creative Cloud. Because with Photoshop, obviously you have to subscribe to that. So that defeats the object of having um, a free alternative, if you know what I mean. So um, you double click on that and that'll load up. I'm pretty sure I've set this up to open um, Camera Raw. And there we go, straight into Camera Raw. You can make your adjustments. Completely non-destructive, you know, make your adjustments, click done. And there I have now have a very quick black and white image. Now, at the moment, you can see here, I've got JPEGs and it's showing JPEGs and RAW. Now, this is where this column on the left-hand side where it says filter is really exciting. And uh, I'm really looking forward to using this a great deal. Um, and you've got here, uh, you've got your ratings, but you've got your file type. So you can either just show camera raw images um, or you can just show your JPEG images, you know, either or, or both if you wanted to. Um, also, you can show your ratings. Which ones have you rated? Oh, I've rated one. Um, and then there's three images there rated with uh, three stars. Um, it's so, so flexible. Uh, four images rated at five stars. Um, or you can uh, search for them by what aperture setting that you had set. Now that might be useful for particularly portrait photographers. He, wants to, he or she wants to double check which ones have been shot at, at the widest aperture. And you can see here for these particular images, the widest was f4 which would be right because it's the Sony 10 to 18 lens. Uh, so you can see what ones I shot at 4.5 and which ones I shot at f5. You know, what a flexible bit of software. Isn't that really, really useful? Uh, in Filmstrip is another, again, a very useful um, feature where it shows the thumbnails along the bottom. You can make those bigger or smaller completely adjustable, make those bigger or smaller. There we go, and the same space bar makes that bigger, exactly the same. And if you hit the tab, that clears away the menus either side. So that's absolutely, that's awesome, yeah. So, uh, and also file management, you've got your folders over here, uh, so you can go through, easily go through your images. I usually either store them under, if I'm testing a particular camera or lens, I'll just label it like they're uh, X-T30 samples or X-H1 samples. But if I've gone to a particular location, for example, I've labeled it, I've called that folder Weymouth, when I mean, there's subfolders within that folder, uh, the Z6, M50, um, so on and so forth. So, you know, a very, very powerful and a very, very simple um, asset management bit of software. Now, as I say, for editing the images, you would, uh, you would set up, I mean, you've almost certainly got some form of editing software on your computer. You might have paid for Affinity, you may have paid for Luminar, uh, you may have paid for you know, some other form, or you may even have a free piece of uh, editing software. Well, set it up in preferences, which one to open it with when you double click. Um, if it's a JPEG image or set up like there, and that's a NEF image, that's a raw image. I can just double click that as I said earlier. Um, uh, not in that mode, it's gotta be under essentials. Then double click that and that'll load up um, camera raw. You know, when I can edit that in camera raw and it's all completely free. I haven't, you know, spent any money on subscriptions or buying software. Well, I may well have bought a one-off piece of software, but there's no subscription to it. Um, and it will work on more than two computers. So it's phenomenal. Um, it does have, uh, as I say on the side here, you've got published. You can publish it to Adobe Stock or Adobe Portfolio. 
I'm going to go into this Adobe portfolio on a separate video. I think it's well worth looking at. Um, and again, uh, a, a great idea. And I think uh, it's a great implementation from Adobe's point of view. Although that actually isn't a, a free service or free software. Um, and then you've got your export. So you can do batch exporting. Uh, you can, if they uh, any NEF files or their other raw files, you can export them as DNGs, which means they'll open up in pretty much any software whatsoever. Um, it's Adobe's digital negative is what DNG stands for, and it's a pretty much standard uh, raw format. Um, or you can export them as JPEGs. You can create all sorts of exports. Um, and I say, and you've got your metadata down the side, down the side here. So clear to see, so easy to see compared to some other software. The, I think the layout on here is is absolutely great. Um, you can view it via your metadata. The list goes on and on. It's a great asset management, a digital asset management for your images. So yeah, that's um, a bit of software I use on all my computers because I don't have to subscribe to it. Although I do subscribe to the Creative Cloud, that only allows me to use it on two computers, but there's a workaround to that as well, and it's actually a very good workaround. Um, so there we go. That's Adobe Bridge. I think it's uh, great. I think you ought to download it and try it, and let me know what you think. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found this short sort of review stroke tutorial really helpful. If you did, please hit the like button if you like this particular video, and subscribe to my channel if you like the channel. That would be really, really helpful. Really appreciate that. Thanks very much for watching, and stay tuned for more videos relating to video and photography. Thanks a lot. Bye.